from the SiliconANGLE Media office in Boston, Massachusetts. It's the Cube. Now, here's your host, Stu Miniman. Hi, and welcome to a special presentation of the Cube here in our Boston area studio. Happy to welcome back to the program Lazbek Urides, who's the CTO and co-founder of Clear Sky Data, also a Boston area company. Laz, th thanks for joining me. Yeah, no, thanks for having me. So, so Laz, uh, we're going to go through a few things here. First of all, you, you're the CTO. You've been in the storage industry for a while. Uh, I first met you when we were both working on virtualization technology, you know, well over a decade ago. So, want to dig into kind of the state of some of the things that are going on. Then, of course, want to talk about uh, what you you're hearing from customers, the update from your company, who we've been tracking you as, since you came out of stealth. Sure. We had Ellen back uh, on the program a few months ago, and uh, you got, got a really solving a really interesting problem out there that many of us have been watching and looking at and hacking at for a lot of our careers. Right. So, sure. Uh, so, so, sure so, so, so first of all, yeah, t t t tell me, you know, what, what, what's the latest with you? Uh, what, what's keeping you busy? Uh, and, and how are things at the company? Uh, well, so uh, we've been very busy. Uh, so first week, first year of selling, really, and uh, so we're, we're collecting our first round of customers, uh, trying to understand what their needs are, trying to understand their pain points, uh, really trying to identify, uh, you know, what what the sweet spot is for our technology, and uh, you know, it's it's a great learning experience. Uh, you know, keeps you up at night, but uh, you know, it's it's been you know extraordinarily interesting for for me because you're you're starting to see a lot of the things that. Uh, you know, we kind of suspected over time uh, would happen or, or are happening, and you see the angst uh, as people have to make a shift uh, in the way they think about technology. And there's no always a continuous path for them to get from where they are to where they need to go. And and so we're having a, a, a lot of really interesting discussions. Uh, and you know, we've been you know updating the product, and really it's the service that that, that uh, we provide, and the technology has been uh, expanded substantially over the course of the last year. Great. And, and, and we're gonna. I think we're gonna unpack mm -hmm. uh, yeah. some of that in a little bit. But let, let's start on some of those. You, you use words like product and services, <laughs> yeah. and some of the big yeah. shifts that are going on in the marketplace. Yeah. You know, let's start with storage. So yeah. you know, storage is. You know, uh, I, I, I said. You know, maybe we got beyond it being storage. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, the things I say. You know, I worked in the, uh, at a yeah. large storage company for ten years. I'm a networking guy by background, and I said, hey guys, I'm sorry. No matter what the coolest technology you're going to have, it's never going to be sexy. Um, but what do you see happening? What's the big trend in storage today? Uh, you know, wh what's driving you know customers you're talking to, and as as you, you think about the, the technology area, what, what's the state of storage? Oh, state of storage is um, so, so. Depending on uh, where you sit in the storage ecosystem, uh, you may be ready to slit your wrists right now, uh, or 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 not. Um, you know, so. The, the 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 fact is that the marginal cost of storing a byte of data is going to zero, right. uh, and uh, you know we knew this all along, right? Um, so you basically have an entire ecosystem of people that basically sell bytes, and you know the cost per byte is going down. So you know the the density of storage is gone up so fast, so quickly that you can't help but have uh, a, a reduction in revenue, uh, and so everything has become really coin operated, and so you see that you see the the you know the, the acquisition of Nimble very recently, um, everyone's getting bought. If you if you consider yourself a storage company, you're you're, you're getting bought or your product is getting bought for a, a, a very um, less interesting multiple, I, I, I should say, than uh, than maybe two or three years ago. Yeah, they, so <laughs> I, I guess it would be fair to say you would think that the era of the standalone storage company has passed. Yes, yes. Uh, and you know, of course, we we look at you know the largest player in storage market got. You know, acquired slash merged. Uh, you know, so EMC, biggest acquisition in, in, in the IT space. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, with Dell. Um, so they are no longer a storage company. They're now part of a much broader portfolio. And all the companies are figuring out how do I deal with cloud? How do I deal with kind of the changing legacy? What new uh, you know solutions and areas get me into? Kind of you know my data, my applications, and um, interesting things that I can do with that information as opposed to just storing the data. That's right. And, and so that's that's a lot of what we have been talking about uh, you know our vision was always about access to your data and we always saw a, a, a place where you would never be limited to one location and uh, you know the cloud is kind of forced that on us 
uh, and the clouds are actually in uh, specific places. They're in you know Virginia and they're in Portland and you know so so um, whether or not you thought you had a second data center, you actually do if you're in the cloud. Mm -hmm. And uh, your data has a lot of inertia, and the world is is really rapidly going to become aware of the inertia of your data. Uh, so if you want, if you want to spin up uh, all that cheap compute in Amazon uh, to work on a problem, how do you get the data there? Uh, you know, you, you could spin up an infinite number of, of cores there, but you know, for an infinite number of cores, you need a really, really large footprint to, for them to work on. Moving a petabyte is is a very difficult thing, and and so uh, you're not going to do that. It, it, and you know, the the current state of infrastructure does not allow you. Uh, to make these types of choices and to be that nimble, your your data is going to sit wherever it is that you last used it. You're never going to want to move it. Yes. Um, so, so what, what what is what is your viewpoint on cloud today? And I guess specifically want to talk about the public clouds. Uh, you know, Amazon, Microsoft, you know, Google, uh, IBM has a show. They're doing yes. some things with it. Oracle uh, making their their push into cloud. But there's you know a, a small number of the big public cloud guys, and then of course I mean there's service providers. There's people that are allowing other clouds to exist, but you know, the big clouds and you know, how, how does storage fit into to that discussion? Well, so you know, the, the, the big clouds, the, the, whole, the whole notion of cloud, it's about optionality, it's about being able to, to turn things on and off uh, anytime you, you really want it. And uh, you know, the, the, the optionality of having multiple clouds or multiple sources of, of infrastructure are, is not there yet. And so, you know, you're seeing a lot of really interesting, uh, at least we are in our, in our sales process, we're seeing a lot of uh, really interesting uh, consternation uh, with respect to, a like, couple weeks ago, uh, Amazon S3 went down for, you know, some ungodly amount of time. Uh, you know, you. You know, everyone is thinking about well, how do I manage that? I mean, if I had a, if I was sole sourced on uh, on S3, my entire IT would be down for five hours right now. Right. Well, what what would that be like? And so, uh, you know, we're we're kind of heading into this multi-cloud world just from a, a a requirement of durability and reliability. Um, but you're also uh, you're seeing that the cloud vendors are differentiating themselves in various ways, either with creative pricing or creative infrastructure. And so, how do you get data there? And, you know, and, and so the new architecture for infrastructure is going to require this sort of more um, agile, uh, you know, infrastructure that allows you to to take your data and put it where it needs to be crunched and then move it somewhere else where somebody else might want to touch it. And, and you know, that's a hard thing to do. Um, you know, and a lot of what we're trying to do in uh, at ClearSky is try to enable that vision uh, and also take away some of the more mundane problems that customers have. Uh, you know, typically you're, part of the problem is that you, know, you, have, you have primary storage, you have secondary storage, you have backup storage, you have DR, you have all sorts of things, uh, you know, that, that makes moving stuff around even more difficult. And, and so being able to just have a bucket that is you know your safely protected encrypted data that you can access from anywhere is uh, is not possible today for a lot of these guys. Um, yeah, I, so I, I think yeah. it makes sense that we yeah. allow you to talk <laughs> a little bit about what you're doing because you went through a bunch of pieces and I agree with much of it. When we talk to users out there and you mm -hmm. say, you hear everything, it's like, oh, the state of the world today is hybrid. Yeah. And you say, okay, what does that mean? It means I have some applications that I'm doing SaaS with. Yep. I have some applications I have in my own sure. data center or in my hosted yep. environment. It's something that I understand the infrastructure stack underneath it and I built an application right. on top of it. And then I'm using one or more public clouds out there. And how much am I using just base things like just you know compute or storage or how much am I going up the stack there? And how do I get my arms around all of that, all of those applications, all of those data? There are you know, lots of companies sure. and lots of people dealing with it because um, it's, uh, uh, we had, uh, you know, somebody wrote for Wikibon a couple of years ago and it was like, well, it's composite cloud. <laughs> and, you know, <laughs> it is, uh, yeah. it, it, and it's really, it's, it's not, <laughs> you know, because it, it's not hybrid. It's like, you know, I buy at, you know, the CVS and at my grocery store and multiple grocery stores and I buy from Amazon and sometimes I'll buy from other places. I'm not a hybrid shopper, mm -hmm. um, no. you know. <laughs> That's right. Uh, I might get a credit card bill that tells me where all my shopping went, but, you know, how do I manage that as a family? So it's, it's really not hybrid because it's not really orchestrated well and that management and orchestration, it's, it sure as heck isn't simple uh, today. Right. And how much am I trading, you know, a certain kind of operational, uh, you know, 
paradigm for a different one and have a you know public cloud is is just getting yeah. more complicated as time right, goes right. on. So how do you what, is, what, what are you hearing from your customers? What's the pain that they have? How are you helping them to solve at least, you know, what parts of those problems are you helping to solve Well, today? Well, so the, the you, you, that was actually a really, really uh, apt analogy, by the way, because, I, you know, the way I think about it is that, you know, if, uh, if there was only one uh, drugstore in yep. your neighborhood uh, and the roads were really bad, you would be, by necessity, always going to the same place. Right. Um, what makes it possible for you to be a hybrid shopper in that word world is is you know you have a car, you have clear roads, uh, you know you have sort of a friction free experience. Right today, the friction is too high. I have delivery today, <laughs> and my, my Boston now has one hour delivery for some stuff, and drones are coming sometime in yeah. the future. So the the, the, <laughs> the the friction in the marketplace or the friction to, to to switch things is is very high at this point, and and that. That that plays into our our vision. Uh, you know, if you look at uh, you know when when we talk to customers in the enterprise, we we always talk about these things. Um, you know, curiously, there's also some a lot of mundane stuff that we talk about. You know, along the lines of you know uh, data protection and just you know essentially making things resilient for them. Because a lot of what they they the difference between buying a, 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 a you know a three hundred dollar disk drive and putting your data on it and uh, enterprise you know requirements is is durability and and reliability and availability right and so you know they have a real bizarre patchwork of ways that they achieve this and it's incredibly expensive today um, so it, it just makes it that much difficult that's another piece of friction that needs to be removed so that they could actually get these options in place for them to, uh, to you know I want to go to Google I want to go to uh, Microsoft I want to go to, to, to Amazon you, you, you can't just make another copy of your data. <laughs> it's, it's yeah. and, and you guys are at an interesting <laughs> intersection. You know, When I worked at a storage company, I'm a networking guy by background, yep. and I worked on that whole thing we called storage networking. And the re reason we created a separate network for storage is because storage group and the network group didn't necessarily play together, and the storage team wanted to control things like you know, performance and latency and all this stuff. Exactly. So if I could build it all together and have right. something bespoke, but when I go to this multi-cloud world, I need to understand how the storage and the network all fit together, and of course, that's where you yes. guys live. So how how's how's the world different today? How are you guys solving that? Because as we said, it's storage as a service with networking really as the the enabler. Yes, that's right. Well, so um, we we um, while we raised thirty nine million dollars, I keep saying we didn't raise enough money to s to change the speed of light. Um, so <laughs> maybe it'll happen at IBM. I don't know, uh, but we are uh, we are very very focused on building a a very very high speed data path uh, that can be solely focused on moving data around. Uh, and we're focused on fixing latency problems. Uh, we're, we're not going to be on the internet anytime soon. You, you just can't do this. There isn't enough bandwidth. Uh, and we're it, just like that storage network that was uh, very, very focused on, on uh, you know, single purpose inside the enterprise data center. Uh, we're doing uh, something that's external uh, that has a similar focus, which is to move data around. And, and uh, you know, this is uh, a requirement, and it's actually a piece of infrastructure uh, that is possible to build today. I think uh, if we tried to do this, uh, you know, 10, 15 years ago, the, the cost equation would have been substantially different. We would have given up. Uh, but, you know, now it's possible to do it, uh, and, you know, there's uh, also a set of technologies that we're using to make it more uh, amenable to this type of application. So, we have a network, uh, we have a unique uh, data management stack, which uh, takes advantage of the network to create a performance profile that is pretty much the same as, as local storage. Uh, and because we're starting to build out endpoints all over the place, uh, you know, you want to access your data in Amazon, we can do that. You want to access your data from uh, from Virginia or New York, and you're in Boston, uh, we can we can enable that as well. So it's a uh, it, it's it's the same thing, only much grander in terms of what a storage network really really is intended for. It's it's it is there to allow you to exercise options. Uh, about how you consume data and what applications can use data, and more importantly, since latency is very important, where? 
physically where, because your users actually do experience latency and they're not happy about it, and your compute does as well. Yeah, so yeah. Ma maybe I think it would be helpful mm. if you could talk about some of those applications, because it reminds me of, say, what Citrix Netscaler does. Mm. Uh, to help with you know access sure. to certain kind of you know if I'm an end user and I'm doing mobility and I need to have access I want to be able to have the same response on my mobile device as I had sitting on my you know laptop in a server that was directly attached you know pretty close so you know understand shrinking not changing the speed of light but making sure I've got the the network bandwidth and the application response that I need so what what are some of those kind of use cases and applications that, that you can share uh, so we spend a lot of time uh, selling to folks that are doing analytics. Yep. Um, so analytics workloads are, uh, are particularly interesting because they're enormous, yep. uh, and they're, they're also highly tiered. And uh, you need to have, in order to crunch this data, you, you really need to have very, very low latency and very, very uh, high throughput, at least to the compute, uh, so that you can, you can actually build these enormous indexes. Uh, to complicate matters, uh, when, you, uh, when you're doing th something like Internet of Things, um, Things don't understand traffic jumps. They're just going to keep dumping data at you. So if if you're getting two or three or four or five terabytes a day, uh, you know that's that's quite a fire hose of data. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, so an application like that uh, is a really interesting one for us because we have this really really gigantic pipe that goes out to the cloud. Where um, last I heard, there is infinite storage, or they they won't run out anytime soon. Mm -hmm. Or else we're all in trouble, uh, and so uh, you know there's always a place for that data to go. Uh, and uh, using our clever caching algorithms, uh, you know there's always enough data there uh, close by the compute that you can do you can do your crunching. Um, mm -hmm. So so the cost benefit of using a network like ours is very very high there because you have a single endpoint that you're using at your your, your data storage. Okay. Um, and, and so, so I'm curious because th yeah. there's uh, a big discussion that's been happening yeah. kind of the last maybe year mm -hmm. at, at this is, uh, and uh, Wikibon's uh, David Floyer has actually been yeah. writing a lot about uh, the edge compute requirement because right. there's certain things. Think about the windmill. I don't have network connectivity, or I've got all these devices mm -hmm. where I need to make that immediate action. Uh, so I need to have some compute there and do right. things. But then some data will go back to the cloud. So how do you how do you parse that? What you know, what happens at the edge? What goes back there? How are you getting inserted? Are there some big partners? Uh, Amazon is, is, is looking at this. Some yeah, of the, every, some of the other, everybody's yeah. looking. Cisco, <laughs> you know, yeah. anybody that's involved, is, you know, when Peter Levine wrote, you know, like cloud computing is dead because it's all going to be at the edge. It was like, oh, okay. <laughs> um, you know, wait, we need yep. to rethink. Data center's yep. changing, edge is changing, cloud's changing. I mean, we know that's the only constant in tech, yes, right, is change. Right. So right. Wh wh where do you fit in that equation? Uh, of well, so uh, w we are the transport. We are f uh, fundamentally the, the the way you actually can get access to the data. And uh, so, if, uh, if if you're collecting uh, your typical typical uh, Splunk like or log, you know, we also partnered with Elasticsearch. I mean, the, the, you know, these these types of applications, you're you're collecting a lot of data at the edge, right. uh, and uh, you need to aggregate it. At some point, so we're the aggregation point that's local, that's okay. very low latency, that's very very fast, that provides you that 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 landing pad uh, where you can do your 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 initial processing. Um, we also can provide you with another high performance sort of uh, processing point in the cloud, so you can do pre-processing, post-processing uh, using a single platform. You don't have to make two copies of the data. And that, that's, uh, w when you're talking about you know, 10 terabytes a day or something like that, that's a pretty expensive footprint that you have to duplicate in two places. And, and uh, you know, it, not to mention the plumbing and all the other things that need to happen in order for that to, to, to be real. And so we, we can just enable that as just a byproduct of, of what we do. And so it, it's very attractive. Um, there are other scenarios. Um, you know, we've you know here in the Boston uh, you know medical community, uh, you know there's a lot of folks doing genomic uh, research where you have more enormous uh, data footprints. Uh, so we've talked to a lot of people that have uh, you know th the same types of data management problems where you know you, you have machines. In this case, they're they're you know medical imaging scanners and things like that uh, that are generating huge amounts of data that you know get crunched and that data needs to be shared or needs to be used in the cloud at some point in the future um, because you can't really have a giant farm of compute 
sitting around idle waiting for the opportunity to be used. It, and so, so th those are the kinds of use cases that I, I see as you know the classic. I call them classic edge computing uh, use cases because you know you you have that need for low latency. You have a, a fire hose of data being generated way out in the edge where the thing is or where the people are. Uh, and you have that latency problem. Um, the other thing that's interesting about uh, this, and I, we haven't really talked about it, is that the internet uh, is not really appropriate for sending a lot of this stuff. There isn't enough bandwidth, uh, really, for uploads. Um, you know, it's, it's kind of optimized for downloads, which is not coincidentally how we all use it. So uh, you, you need infrastructure like this. Uh, and, and so that's, that's the classic use case for us. That, Great, we're going to be talking yeah. about how high def <laughs> video can get up faster <laughs> and yeah. even better. Um, yes. <laughs> if you want to upload it, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. We want to stream it. Yes. We want to do lots of stuff with it. Uh, great. So, uh, I guess last piece is, you know, talk about, you know, what's exciting you in the industry. You know, we always get excited to kind of the, the, the next big tool, uh, uh, you know, containerization, serverless That's technology. Um, you know, where does that fit into the discussion and how does that change the discussion of, you know, data and, and application modernization? So, we're, we're slowly creeping up the stack. Uh, so, uh, you know, and, and you know, we're, we're not, we're, we're a Data management company, not a not not really like you know it's what what uh, a typical storage company does, and so we're we're creeping up the stack. The thing that is really interesting to us right now are technologies that are uh, more abstracting of the underlying infrastructure. So Docker is one of those. Um, you know, certainly the uh, the, the serverless compute uh, vendors, although that's so fragmented right now, I, I find myself I really wish that there was some VMware like entity that was the serverless computing company that we could just all go and integrate with and and make it all happen, but I, I'm not, I don't we, see we've that We've got right AWS now. Lambda, yeah. <laughs> and I think we have at least three open source solutions that I'm aware of yes. right now, and it, it, they're, they're working on uh, 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 it. It's still very early, so. Yes, but, but you know, managing state in those environments yeah. is, uh, is a very, very difficult thing because, uh, you know, that ultimately that's what we do. We, we manage state, and we make it, we fix it so your state is always present, it's always durable, and it can show up anywhere you decide to actually uh, access that, that state. And, um, you know that's a missing piece of the Docker uh, Foundation today. Uh, you know that, and, and so there's a big opportunity there, and that's that's really exciting to us. Uh, you know, but Do Docker's mature enough where you can actually say, well, okay, that's likely to be one of one or two players that are are going to be available and, and are going to have an addressable market that you could attack. Um, you know, serverless compute, as you said, you know, it's it's, it's hard to be the state for uh, Amazon today. Um, you know, it's just not built that way. Uh, but um, you know the other players, they're open source solutions, and they don't have as much traction. Yeah. And, and so, and, 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 and I'm curious when when I think about kind of how the network and and things move in there. Uh, I wonder if it comments on like VMware NFV. Uh, and uh, not NFV, NSX, sorry, yep. uh, and uh, like Kubernetes, which ties into the container piece, but also one of the things they talk about is if I've got multiple clouds, you know, Kubernetes is supported in all the public clouds and OpenStack and, and lots sure. of environments. So, you know, either or both of those, if, if you have uh, how those fit in. Yeah, those, those you know, and, and we fit in wonderfully in those kinds of environments because what we enable is the, the state to move, like yep. really large amounts of data. So. One of the things that we found uh, interesting is that you know folks are using containers for a lot of the stateless portions of the applications. But if you have you know the the, the lifeblood of the enterprise is databases, right? Uh, you know they, they have these big, huge either structured or unstructured databases and um, huge data footprints. Putting that in a container uh, is kind of an oddity right now, and, and you know there are folks that are trying to work on on, uh, on how to actually do that. Uh, but you know consider a world where you can just treat a database as a, a containerized thing, uh, and you can just move it from one piece of compute to another, or another one location to another. Um, that's, you know, that's uh, you know, a very, very exciting thing to me. It makes me, uh, it, it makes me want to go out and build something uh, right now. In fact, maybe we're doing that. <laughs> <laughs> so, so. Excellent. Uh, last, I want to give you the final word. Um, you know, any any specific jobs you guys are hiring for, or you know things that you'd say people out there in the industry. It's like, hey, if you're having, you know, if you have this, you know, come talk to us. Well, uh, so we are in during uh, in the middle of our uh, our sales ramp. Uh, so we're all about hiring, you know, really talented go to market, you know, and, and certainly um, you know account executives. And so uh, you know you know. 
tweet at me if uh, <laughs> if you're uh, in any of the territories where we have uh, an actual uh, point of presence. And there are a few places uh, like the West Coast where we might have one very, very shortly. Uh, where uh, I'd love to talk to you if you're out there. All right. Uh, yep. Great. Um, and uh, Laz, always great catching up with you. Yeah. Uh, it, we expect to hear <laughs> lots more updates c coming out as product enhances, customers are growing, and uh, you know, congratulations on the progress so far. So far, and uh, always great to, yeah. to talk with Same you here. Uh, here and online. So, uh, thanks for joining us for this segment, and you've been watching the Cube. <laughs>